When does a journey to get healthier or change your nutrition or exercise turn into disordered eating? This is a question that I get all of the time. And the overarching answer is how does it impact your life? If you're trying to make these changes and it really negatively impacts your life, meaning it takes away from your social life, you're noticing yourself obs obsessing over food all of the time, or really just focusing too much on what you're eating and exercising to the point where you're not able to enjoy life, that's when it leads to disordered eating. So I'm going to talk about this in the context of kind of four different things here, right? The first one is actually logging food. Now, logging food is something that a lot of people will sometimes do uh, when they're trying to change the nutrition, right? Either they want to just see how many calories they're getting in or they log for the purposes of making sure they're getting in enough protein, etc. When that's going to turn to disordered eating is in these few examples. Number one would be if you know you don't eat a food because you don't know how it's going to log, meaning you won't eat out or you won't eat at a friend's house because you're not sure of the calories in it, so you just avoid it entirely. That would be disordered eating. Another would be if you're so rigid about the amount of calories that you're requiring for yourself that you obsess over it and panic if you go over. For example, let's say you set your calories at 1900. If you have 1950 or 2000 in a day, you freak out and feel like you have to compensate and do all of these things to make up for that little bit over, right? There always has to be flexibility. It is perfectly normal for you to not eat the exact same amount of calories every single day for the rest of your life. Another time in which logging food would become disordered is when you're finding yourself skipping meals in order to fit into your calories. Does that make sense? So for example, one thing that I see is someone will know that they're gonna go out to eat and they're okay with that this time, but they'll skip breakfast or lunch or whatever to make sure it all fits within their calories. All of those would be examples of how that can transition into disordered eating. Logging should be there to help you. Logging should be there for a little bit of accountability to make sure that you are keeping some consistency with food, but it shouldn't be that obsessive with those points that I just mentioned. Now, the, the second point in which I wanna bring up in how this can transition into dis disordered eating is exercise, right? Now, I know that's not eating, but exercise can become very disordered. It is fine if you wanna add a routine to your days and you wanna to try to exercise more or you wanna do something with some sort of structure, that's fine. When it becomes a problem is again, how is it impacting your life? If something unexpected comes up, do you freak out because you missed that workout? Or do you work out extra hard the next day because you missed a workout? Are you working out when you're sick or when you're injured? Any of those things would be when that becomes disordered and obsessive and not truly focusing on just bettering your health and lifestyle. The third point would be trying to eat more healthy foods, right? And a lot of people are like, well, how could that possibly be disordered? Again, it comes down to the rigidity around it, right? So let's say you are trying to add in more vegetables to your days or more fruits or more proteins or whole grains or I don't know, whatever it is, right? That's great. There's no problem with trying to incorporate those foods into your diet. The issue with this is when you have no flexibility, again, we're gonna use that word a lot, to have other foods. So for example, again, we'll use the like going to a friend's house or eating out. Let's say you go and there's, I don't know, some dessert you absolutely will not have the dessert. Now, it's one thing if you just genuinely don't like the dessert, it's not something that you're really into, fine, or you're totally stuffed from the dinner and you really can't eat dessert because you're full. But if you're refusing that dessert purely because you think it's bad for you or purely because you think it's going to like make you gain all of this weight, that's when it turns into disorder. There's room for sweets and desserts in life. And again, you have to have some flexibility. If you are someone who hasn't had dessert in six years because you think it's bad for you, I would argue that's a form of disordered eating. There's balance in trying to eat healthier, right? You can add foods to your days, but you shouldn't be so rigid that you would never touch a certain food because you don't deem it good enough. Now, the last point that I wanna talk about that can be kind of a gray area on this disordered eating is avoiding sugar. So that kind of ties into what I was just saying, but I wanted to touch on this specifically because this is something that uh, can sometimes be a point of contention. A lot of people think it's fine to say like, okay, well, I'm cutting out all processed sugar. Everybody says that that's okay, sugar is bad for you, blah, 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 blah. 
that's disordered, right? Cutting out an entire food group or category can be really disordered because again, back to the flexibility word, it is realistic to sometimes have sugar in your days, right? So I'll use this example that I'll never forget. I had a client tell me once that she, so here where I live, a lot of people walk and they go get soft serve ice cream in the summer, right? And she told me that in the past eight to 10 years, she had never had a soft serve ice cream. And she didn't think anything of it until her kid said, huh, mom, how come every time you take me to get ice cream, you never get any? And I know that seems like a very small thing for me to remember, but I remembered that because that just goes to show how that rigidity other people notice. There's no reason for that. Like, yeah, if you don't want to have ice cream every single day of the week, you don't have to, but there's also flexibility in getting an ice cream cone occasionally or walking with your family and going to get soft serve ice cream over the summer. There's a room for that. And if you're so rigid that you can't incorporate that into your lifestyle, that's when it becomes disordered. So I wanted to talk about all these points today because again, this is a really common question. When does trying to be healthy turn into disordered eating? And in case you didn't notice, the common theme here is the rigidity versus the flexibility. We always want to be flexible with our food. When you're making lifestyle changes, it's so much more realistic to be flexible and have some room for different things to happen and live life as opposed to being so obsessed that you can't stray from your plan ever without freaking out. Hopefully you see the difference there. Please leave us any questions that you might have in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe.